this is Simon and today I want to discuss a bit of the retrofit I did on this Highmaster model 15, 51531 and why I decided to add a linear encoder, Idanalito encoder model MT2525 mm of travel, 0.2 micron uh, resolution and we're gonna discuss the, um, why I did this and what um, what problem in my mind solved uh, this retrofit over the traditional uh, height master design. So first, um, this is maybe an uncommon uh, measuring tool for some of you. So I'm gonna explain what's the building accuracy of this design. That's really clever. It's pretty much, in this case, a rare model with a 10 mm increment of gauge block. So you have 30 gauge block for 30 uh, mm of um, possibility of measurement. So you, you have all this stack up and you have a very fine um, micro, uh, micrometer screw that give the entire uh, gauge stack. Um, around 25 millimeter of uh, movement so you have the precision of very uh, precise increment with a precise displacement um, of a micrometer screw now you have a very different uh, design this design I, I, I prefer you have uh, 25 millimeter inches uh, increment you have, this is a step design, you have an unstep which is pretty much only like this. I, I don't think that's as useful. This one you can probe under and, and over. You can clamp a gauge block uh, sticking out for a dial bore. There's a, there's a lot of things you can, you can do and this is a comparative um, way of measurement. So you have your DTI and you probe the height of your part and then you come here and you crank this end old in your DTI read zero and then you read um, the measurement on your on your dial. So for those who had work with uh, some of them uh, when I saw this one on eBay I thought that was very awesome because if you ever need one and you have 25 or inch increment, you will recognize that you're cranking this a lot. Sometimes you you get over travel when you try to probe your your measurement. You need to switch to the other block, and then you have to to crank that knob 25 millimeters. So this is a, a bit of a faster design, and one of the reason why I decided to go with a linear probe is this model already come with a rotary encoder which I didn't have to read out to to read uh, but as many know the rotary encoder is depending of the precision of the screw because that's only give you the position of the knob so then the linear encoder I got an envelope I'll show you the inside later but it's pretty much give you uh, the measurement straight on the moving part, so it's a, it's a bit more accurate. And this one give 0.2 um, millimeter uh, increment. Now the Ida 9 read 0.1, but the the real precision of this thing is 0.2. So so I was pretty much inspired by another uh, Ceramax Mutitoyo um, Height Master that already have a digital uh, linear, I don't know if it was a linear probe or an encoder, but um, it was it was built in, but they don't do them anymore and they are very pricey and very rare on eBay. So I decided to do it uh, myself. I'll, I'll show you a picture from my, my old job. But what I tried to replicate here, and that doesn't give you all the, um, all the function that I would like to but most of them is that the this is the ND970 from Ida9 it's a late um, the arrow and what this thing give you it's a 99 offset tool offset that are incremental link 
between each other. So, uh, re and referencing into uh, absolute datum. So that's kind of what we want here when we put the 11 millimeter gauge block here and we reference um, and we reference on this gauge block then we, we can call offset number one call in 11 millimeter which is our absolute datum and then having one offset for every single gauge block and with calibration you can also add up the calibration error and most of the time you ask for a point in the center um, when you do the calibration, so when you probe, you, you probe on the center. And then what it's give you is if you want to probe a, a part length and you know that you're in block 5, then you just call up offset 5 and then it add up, um, it add up the, the 15 millimeter on it. So, and as you can see, I got offset 5, offset 4, and they, they all drop from 10 millimeter. So, that's, that's make um, reading the, the measurement a lot easier. Um, because there's absolutely, you got the dial here, but you pretty much have to count the turn and you can quickly lose track or, or make... Uh, one turn mistake and if you have an incremental measurement you want to take let's say um, a step on a high part and you want to measure the step from top to uh, from the first level to the second then it's an incremental measurement and then you need to add up the first measurement and the second then subtract and in this one you just you, you can pretty much just zero it um yeah so you can tell me working at 0.1 microns kind of a vain um a vain quest but um this is not about um dimensional precision what i i was aiming for it's not about uh precision in dimension but precision in the repeatability of your measurement as you can see, I got I got four digits. It's in it's in millimeters. So I I got 0.1 micron, and I can really dial in each of them. Now, of course, if I I pressed on the thing, I got deflection, but it's the deflection return pretty much at zero. If you have an amplifier that also read the 0.1 micron. And as I said, it's not it's not a dimensional uh, uh, situation here. It's a repeat reading uh, situation. So this may not give you exactly 2.1 micron the dimension you want, but when you're gonna probe it with your DTI or your LVDT and you turn it on zero, this is repeating really well. So when you take your zero on your part and you put it on your height master, it's gonna repeat as good as. As it can be and I'm gonna show you uh, what can be the problem so let's say uh, that, that was something I did a lot when I was jig grinding let's say you want to check the end tracks uh, on the um, on this part this hole with this hole and it need to be a very precise dimensional uh, tolerance and position then if you don't have a CMM the high master is a very powerful tool for that and what you usually do is you probe the end of the hole, the top, then you divide it by two to, to know your diameter, find the center point, then go up there, do the same up, down, to the center point, and then you do the math to know your uh, distance between your two holes. But just doing this simple task, you're probing your part eight times, and you're putting your DTI, DTI on zero eight times. Four times on the part, four times on the height master. And if you have a micron, which is pretty uh, common on DTI repeatability uh, error, then you're kind of adding up this tiny bit of error eight times. So if you just want to know that, I mean, that can add up pretty well. And you can end up with an error a lot larger than what you think. So this is really... 
uh, one of these issues that this precision uh, try to solve is the repeatability of your zero when you're taking your part on. So here we have some detail on the construction of uh, what I had to, to build to make it possible. Uh, yes, I did a cutoff in the original part, but uh, I feel no shame modifying my expensive eye precision tool. And if you do, I, I'm sorry, this is not the channel for you. Um, <laughs> so um, this is the clamp that uh, hold the, the MT25. And I pretty much um, took this, this part and uh, reproduce all feature on it. Um, this is the, the clamping block that all the, the the dust guard that was already there. So I redid pretty much the same hole using the same bolt, having the five uh, millimeter, four millimeter uh, screw at the right spot so I can uh, screw the guard back. Then uh, I'll show you uh, a bit more of the footage of the of the block. But I have four millimeter screw pinching the um, uh, pinching the the probe here. Then I have this anvil that it's glued with Loctite 3, uh, 325 on the side that a carbide anvil lap and I mill a second threaded hole here so I can adjust the clamp here to have a, a less cosine error um, when the, the stem go up and down because if this and this is on a bit of an angle, so if this wasn't perfectly aligned with the with the axis of motion, then you have a small actual displacement adding up because it's kind of running on the angle. And this is a little bit, and this may be a little bit OCD, but uh, I prefer to remove all those tiny little uh, error make it as if more efficient as I can. So this is all um, ductile iron, um, sand and wax for uh, corrosion purposes. I, f I feel wax is uh, very efficient to prevent rust. And, um, and this, uh, this is pretty much it for the, for the inner. On the other side, I have um, another block glued. That's um, the same weight of this one plus the um, the pressure of the probe on the block. So since it's a symmetrical design, um, th the weight is equal on both sides. And as you can see, it's this um, height master is right on um, ball ways, which is pretty much a 2V, uh, 2V ways. One up there, another up there. Um, and I had to pay attention that I don't interfere with anything this is cut off so this can be removed it's uh, if uh, ever needed